Hello friends on Facebook. Uh, today uh, in my, my live stream, I'm going to be um, inviting my colleague, uh, Lissa Mahalik, and uh, she's going to be demonstrating how to relieve pain through movement. Wow, isn't that cool, huh? And so um, she's going to be joining me in a, in a little bit. And uh, Lissa, do you see me yet? I gotcha. Ah, oh, there she is. All right, I'm going to invite her on. There she is. Oh, there's a top of my head. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> right on. All right. There we go. Now you can see me. I can see you. Everything's awesome. Hi, Jonathan. <laughs> Hi, Lissa. And uh, why don't you a uh, quick introduction about who you are and what you do? All right. I am Lissa Mahalik of somaticanatomy.com. I am the movement hacker, which means that I'm going to use movement instead of pills and machines and all these other things to change your mind and change your body. So I'm a, I'm a somatic movement therapist by trade. And the thing with somatics is we don't recognize any difference between the mind and the body. So what you do with your body is also what happens with your mind. And I'm actually really looking forward to working with you today, Jonathan, because you have a kind of a different angle on this. And I think they're going to work together really, really well. Yeah, I love that you uh, are a practitioner with the body and the mind. Um, I come from it from a slightly different angle. Um, I have uh, 18 years of bodywork in shiatsu, and then I've uh, spent the last 10 years in personal development and did a lot of studies with Dr. John Martini. And so um, I take a bodywork and a um, it's kind of a psychology approach to the uh, and human behavior approach to the mind-body connection, which I call the mind-body factor, which we're dealing with the perceptions that create, that drive a lot of the diseases. And if we alter the perception, then we can alter uh, the, uh, the disease function. And so um, it's going to be cool to see how we overlap and where we differ and how they dovetail together. So I'm really looking look forward to Yeah, I'm really yeah. looking forward to seeing that, too. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Let's see. Right on. Okay, right. so I am, I'm at your disposal. So, okay. So you've been telling me that you've been having pain in your body. <clears throat> and usually when I work with people, the first thing I say is, what hurts? Tell me about what's going on. And okay, we'll go from there. All right. So let's see. So next up, huh? Um, yeah, there was a little, a little bit of pain in the. Well, actually, it's not. It, I was having pain, more pain when I was doing this, leaning to the left and down. Left and down. There's a little bit of a. Uh, some um, comfort there. Mm -hmm. It's not as acute, not as acute today, but um, it's it's definitely more than the right. Actually, if I look down into the right, then I can feel the left pulling. Mm -hmm. Are you in a swivel chair by any chance? Am I what? Are you in a swivel chair by any chance? Yes, I am. Good. Can you sit up? Sure. And turn your body so that your left ear is facing me, please. Awesome. Yep. Is that good? Okay, yeah, so I'm just taking a look at where your head is versus your shoulders. And then could you give me 180 degrees? I wanna see your other ear, please. Okay. I love swivel chairs, this is great. All right, now this is interesting because what I'm seeing is there is a difference between the two sides. Mm. So yep. this, sense. yeah, like this side is actually looking better aligned. Your head is better balanced over your over your rib cage, relatively speaking. So, so the right side looks more aligned. Is that is that your right side or your left side? Like now that we're on camera. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, uh, this side is my right side. Okay. And the other side was the left. So which one looked better to gotcha. Which one looked more? Aligned? Yeah, this side right now. This side is looking better to me. It's looking better organized. Now, uh -huh. so if you would if you would turn 180, we're going to work from that side because. Anyone who's watching and who does this stuff is going to see more of a difference. So mm. let me see your other ear, please. Okay. Yeah, I'll turn back. Thank you. All right. 
Yeah, so when I can, when I see the side, could you scoot forwards like four inches? There you go. All right. So if you, this is for all the audience and the movement nerds out there, can you see how on this side, it actually, Jonathan, it looks like your head is, is more forward on this side. Actually, your chin is farther forward, and there's more of a curve in your neck when I look at you from this side, which is super interesting. Now, this could be coming from anywhere on the kinetic chain, but... You know, since you're sitting, it's probably not coming from your feet, which is nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to work from the base of your skull and try to rearrange this a bit. So bring your hands behind your ears. Yeah, so right, right, yeah, so right in the back of your ears, if you want to take a look at, at me right now, there is this little like upside down triangle of bone that points down behind your ears. Uh -huh. That's your mastoid process. And if you just go about maybe half an inch or a little bit less, just below the tip of that mastoid process, you may or may not feel a little bump in your neck right below that spot. Do I need to go any? Now you're too far back. Go, go back up. Let me see. If it... There you go. Yeah. So go down. So you feel that bone right there? Yeah. Okay, so feel, go, go down there. Be, it's, it's kind of vaguely triangular shape. You can go straight, yeah, there, more, uh, more about there. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, there yeah. you go. Okay, so. Right, Feels more pointy. Yeah, so right at the end, the bottom of that, you feel that kind of bump or that slight tender spot there? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I feel it. Boom. That, yeah. you are holding. Left side, yeah, left side's definitely a little bit more uh, tender than the right. Yeah, yeah, it's because there's a lot more going on that side. Right now, you are literally holding your first cervical vertebra between your two fingers, which is, it never fails to make me kind of like, oh, this is so cool. I get excited about these things. <laughs> so the first thing I'd like you to do is just kind of using your fingers, move those, move those two points side to side so that you're rotating your head by using your fingers. Should I go left or right? Doesn't matter. One goes forward, one goes back. Yep. Like that. And yep. And just move them back and forth, and just let let your head move in response to moving that atlas. That's C one. Okay, so I'm using my fingers to move my head. Yeah. Yeah, you're moving using your fingers to move your head from that first cervical vertebra, which is literally the base for your skull. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Now, while you're doing that, one thing that I notice sometimes is that my, you know, these two little bumps, one of them will be, will stick out farther, or one of them will kind of feel like a little bit deeper. And sometimes all it takes is just putting my fingers here and Kind of sliding my head side to side, around and around, until they feel a little bit more even, forward and back. And so just moving with an awareness of your first cervical vertebra. Yeah, it feels like it's getting easier. Yes. Yeah, a lot more movement, a lot less effort to turn left and right. Yeah. Awareness is the first step, no matter where you go. Wow, this is super cool. The, okay, there's so many cool things about this part of the body, too, like base of the skull, bottom of, you know, top of the rib, uh, rib cage, top of the, uh, top of the spine, because this is literally where your spine, your spinal cord comes out of your brain, comes out of your brain, there's this one little hole in the center of your skull, comes right down and into the spinal column. And this is that transference point. So even before we do anything else, just kind of bring your head back to center. Let your arms and shoulders relax. And can you scoot forward again because I've kind of lost you on the screen. There we go, yeah. All right, does anybody remember how he looked beforehand? This is different. How does it feel? Yeah, it feels like um, I'm more upright. Actually, let's try to. 
Yeah. Um, turning to the left is easier. So I've got a little bit of tension, but there's a definite improvement. I feel like, yeah, my neck is freer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I felt some of the vertebrae kind of uh, adjust too. They will do that, yeah. So it's, yeah. like I said, the basic thing is as soon as you just find that base, like find, find this, get, become aware of the structure that's there in your body. Once, you, once you've brought up that awareness and you know what you're working with, then you can organize it. And the best thing, what we just did, your body organized itself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like all you were doing is like, oh, what am I doing? I'm moving. I know this thing is here. And your body's like, oh, well, if that's there, then this should be here. And, and neck cracks and body organizes and things get better, which is pretty darn cool. Now, the next, the next thing I would say is for you to take out into your life and keep practicing. One, this is not a bad practice for you. I think this is actually quite a good practice for you because bring up that awareness is pretty important. But the other thing is to think about, like imagine that you can take that vertebra and rotate it forward a little bit. Just as if you're going, let's say, just kind of imagine as if, you know, if you had, if you had a, a dowel going right through your spine at this level, you could just rotate it forward. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I need a dowel here. All I've got is a pen. But it's just like rolling it forward so that this, this rotates down and this rotates up. This shortens, this lengthens. Mm. Is it time? And what's the, uh, what's the, what's the purpose of uh, rotating it forward? Rotating it forward, two things. One, you're, gonna, you're going to activate some of the very deep muscles in the front of your neck, you know, longus cola, longus capitis. Two, you're going to start opening up the base of your skull. This is an extremely important part of your body because you've got this little muscle group called the suboccipitals. Sub under occipitals, this is your occiput. So the muscles that are sitting under your occiput. Science. Um, Latin. Right? Latin too. <laughs> Science and Latin. Sometimes Latin is super helpful. Not all these names are helpful, but that one's particularly good. The cool thing about the suboccipital group is that they have a whole bunch of stretch receptors in them. They have a ton of proprioceptors. And when those muscles are held at the proper length, those stretch receptors send information to our brains telling us where we are in space. When we got a forward head and our heads are crunched, then it's not the right length. And the information that's sent through to our brains about where we are in space is not clear. Mm. So by shortening the front and lengthening the back, we can open up the back of the skull, we can balance the head on top of the ribs, on top of the pelvis, on top of the feet, and we can get good, clean information in from our proprioceptors, which is what little buggers are supposed to do. They're trying to do their job, we make it easy for them to do their job, everybody's happy. So that's what's so important about them. The second thing that's important about them, some of them literally attach to the dura mater, which would be one of the membranes that surrounds your entire central nervous system. So it's, you know, it's, it's that one of those tough membranes that protects it, but it also keeps the cerebrospinal fluid in there, which is cushioning and floating. So it kind of keeps your brain suspended in this nice cushioned, you know, non-damaging and almost weightless environment. But if you start pulling on that, then you are literally pulling your brain off center. Mm. So, yeah, so shortening through the front, lengthening through the back. And it's like, so if you look at, if you look at how my spine is, my head's forward. I'm kind of sunk here. If I rotate this back, then my head comes back. I'm more balanced on top of my spine. I still have a little bit of forward head because, hey, nobody's perfect. And I have a phone too. Um, but the more I practice this, the more I can feel my head is now balanced over my ribs, which is balanced over my pelvis. And that mm. means there's a lot less effort going to keep myself from falling over, which also means that my muscles are not sitting there trying desperately to keep my head from falling off and causing me pain. Mm. So Interesting. That's a lot of talking that explains why when you do this and sort out your head, your neck feels better. 
Yeah. 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 yeah just, just, yeah, just rotating left and right, and then doing that. That, that is like a lovely like adjustment and neck massage combined. Right. It's so simple. Yeah, all the chiropractors and Alexander teachers and everybody. Thanks, Adamaris. <laughs> all the chiropractors and Alexander teachers, etc., are super excited about C1 because little adjustments there, see, change everything. Yeah, it, it actually goes right down the spine, which is like uh, the spine actually your, um, correlates with your values. Ooh. So for those of us who do Demartini values work, um, the C1 is the highest value. Now C right there. And if your C1 is off kilter, so is your highest value. Yeah. So and so that. that's why if you get in alignment with the highest value, everything else aligns. And that's why actually chiropractors uh, really want to make sure they get that C1 just right. Right. Because it just reverberates. It, it translates to the rest of the spine. And Dr. Demartini, he's, he's a chiropractor. <laughs> so I should know. the principles, mm -hmm. he found another way to apply the principles of chiropractic um, through by uh, through axiology, which is the study of values, the science of values. Yes. So interesting. And one of the things I find when I work with people who are very aware of their energy, or even people who are just energy workers, uh, what they'll notice is that when when your spine is aligned, you can actually feel the flow of energy, you know, coming in from the universe, coming up from the earth, moving down through you, moving up and out through you, depending on how it's going. So when your spine is clear, so is your energy. And so are your values. It's all about the yeah. spine. It's actually all about everything, but the spine is a great place to start. Yeah, it's a, it's a great way to, and it's uh, what I love about what you, you just demonstrated is that it's, uh, you can teach somebody like me or anybody on the, and they can do it. And they, I feel the difference. I mean, I'm, I'm actually feeling, I'm feeling more aligned. I'm feeling everything you just said. The energy is better. You saw people could see my, see my, um, my, how's my head looking now? <laughs> it's ridiculous. It looks so different right now. <laughs> yeah. Too bad. We, uh, you know, what? I should take a screenshot. I'll take a screenshot of what it looked like before and then we'll do it before and after. I can post it in the comments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you're still leaning wow. in the chair, but hey. <laughs> that is so cool. So um, would you like to hear the uh, mind-body factor connection? Like what's what's been going on with me that created this? Let's go there. Let's totally go there. Because yeah, cause yeah, this is the underlying stuff. Mm -hmm. Mind mm -hmm. is the body, the body is the mind. Take it away. Yeah. So um, for me, I've been I've been dealing with a lot of uh, I've been struggling with a lot of uh, um, challenge in uh, building my business, building my brand. Um, you know, I'm working. How I met you, Lisa, is through um, through Jennifer Kim, mm -hmm. Momentum Pro. And so um, I'm going through the learning curve of learning how to build a brand and do online marketing. Um, so a lot of uh, you know decisions to make. Um, you know, this is really new to me. So just um, also the, um, so the neck represents the decisions. Oh. Um, it also, it also represents, you know, because it's, this is where the throat is, is about, you know, expressing oneself, being seen, being heard. That whole fifth chakra so, thing. Yeah. Throat, and if you bring, yeah, chakras, throat chakra. So um, I've been having to, um, well, in practicing, like doing live streams and putting myself out there, it's been triggering the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. I have had to work through so much baggage, so much judgment I've had of myself in the past. Going, I, you know, I've been doing work with two of my colleagues, uh, fantastic uh, Demartini facilitators named Dana Fontenot and Curtis uh, Harrier. And we've had to look at stuff way back when I was like three years old, four years old, mm -hmm. stuff in college, stuff in high school. I've had to, you know, do a lot of the uh, um, uh, integration, emotional integration work using the Demartini method, which is one of Dr. Demartini's other tools to work through, appreciate all the baggage from my past. Because um, as I put myself out there, you know, positively, which is called uh, phototropism. So, like a tree, we grow upwards towards the light. Uh -huh. So, if we're putting ourselves out there, 
at the same time, it's going to force us to, to utilize our gravity, our, our gravitropism, which is the roots. Mm -hmm. And so that, what that does is it brings up a lot of baggage. It brings up a lot of shame. So it brings up like, you know, stuff where I thought I wasn't worthy, not good enough. I made a mistake, you know, all the things along those lines. And so, um, as I've been doing these live stream stuff's been coming up. So I've been working through them myself and with my colleagues. And so, um, that's why I've been having neck issues. And then because the left side, the left side is our feminine side of the body. You know, I'm around, you know, Momentum Pro is like what? 95% women. There's a <laughs> and, lot of women in MoPro. <laughs> yeah. And being driven by the, you know, the uh, empress, the queen of them all, Jennifer Kim, who's a very powerful uh, female business leader. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just, the, the stress of that, <laughs> not surprised, it's on my left side. Um, and then I'm actually even in another mastermind who's also being led by a very powerful businesswoman named Perry Sean. She's a, uh, a Demartini facilitator. She's a um, uh, sales coach from out of Canada. Um, amazing um, mentor. So, um, yeah, I, I, I have a lot of female, female stress, female challenges. Um, <laughs> but it's helping me to grow. So, yeah. Um, uh, you know, if, if we're, if I'm green, I'm growing. So I'm feeling, you know, I've been feeling really green this year. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that would explain it. Is that making sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's very interesting that it's, you know, it's stress that is coming from females, but not necessarily what one would normally think of as girl trouble. It's like, yeah, you know, it's just like, there's a lot going on. And there's a powerful female figure in there, and that's part of what's what's happening. That's that's very interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it was it, when, when as soon as you, you you said my the the right side looked aligned, the left side looked off. I was like, oh, I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just <been> smacked <laughs> my by Jen. <laughs> yeah, mind body connection right there, and then it's like, oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So cool. Yeah, cool. So that's interesting. It's how like you know kind of the input comes in, comes into the body. And this is what, uh, gosh, I, I've heard this so many times, but have you heard the phrase, the issues are in the tissues? Yes, absolutely. From, uh, uh, do you hear that from Tom Myers or somebody else? I've heard it from so many different people. I know I've heard it from yeah. people, among others. Love Tom. I know, but uh, yeah, I, that's where I heard it from, uh, from Thomas Myers. Yes, but that, and that's, I mean, for me, that's the most interesting thing. Cause we were talking about having to go back and find things when you were really small or when you were in college or when you were in high school. And a lot of times we carry these things, literally we carry these things in our body and our movement habits. And one of the things that I find really interesting is, you know, you're talking about phototropism and what is it, gravito? What's gravitropism. It? Gravitropism, thank you. I'm like, I, I'm missing a syllable there or putting an extra one in. And the way, you know, the way that I would talk about that is I would be talking about, um, about Laban language or about, uh, about dimensions. So you've got like the vertical dimension. Now, one of the things with, when, when people deal with dimensions, we tend, to, we tend to kind of pick one half of it and go with that. So with the vertical dimension, we'll either go down or we'll go up, but we don't balance it in that up and down very often. You know, side to side, that's actually generally a little bit easier Although, you know, how many times have you just find yourself like hanging out on one hip or leaning against the wall or having your bag on one shoulder? So there's always one side that we're going to favor. And then we, when we've got this, the sagittal dimension that's forward and back, it's, I personally find the forward is much easier to, to deal with and to connect with. And I'm suspecting from what I've seen around me, a lot of other people feel similarly. And I think a big part of that is that we are very visual creatures. Humans, we take in a lot of input through our eyes and through our ears. And when, when we see ourselves in the mirror, we see our fronts, we don't see our backs. So when we inhale, we inhale in the front and not in the back. So exercise, change your body, change your mind. If you put your hand like, so here's the base of my rib cage here. I'm wearing a black shirt. That makes it really easy to see what the hell's on going on, especially when I'm sitting in this black chair. I'd, I'd say I was going to change it, but I'm really not because I'm a New Yorker. I am running out of battery for just a sec. So I'm going to do this exercise and I'm going to plug this thing in. So you put your hand down your belly. And without trying to change anything, you just breathe into your belly. 
and just feel it move. Just notice there's movement. Now, you bring your hands around the back of your rib cage. Put your hands down the base of your rib cage. If it's uncomfortable to use your palms, you can use the backs of your hands. Or you can just press your back against something. But hands are good. And as you breathe, notice, are you breathing into your back? Yeah, I can feel my back moving. Now align your head properly. Feel that change? Yeah, there's more movement. Yes. When the spine is aligned, the energy is flowing and your body is better balanced with breathing properly. All right. Give me just a second. I'm going to plug my phone in because old iPhone. Wake up. Hopefully I have no idea how I'm going to stand up. Or maybe just turn it sideways. Will that work? Or am I sideways? I think I'm sideways. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We had that problem. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh... Yeah. All right. There we go. It, it, it isn't ideal, but at least you can see. I swear I had 100% uh, battery here. I'm going to sit up. I had 100% battery when we started this thing. Oh, iPhone 6. Anyhow, so, you know, again, when you, when you bring awareness to the breathing in the front and the back, it changes your breath. When you bring your awareness to the top of the spine, you align your spine, then that changes what's going on. And the interesting thing is, again, most people tend to breathe through the belly rather than through the back. Now, what does... Uh, what does the mind-body factor have to say about that? Because I'm super curious. Yes. Um, so the front is about the future. Uh-huh. And it's about uh, what we're seeking, so what we're infatuated with, what's supporting our values. So we're, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're trying to seek, we're seeking things to fulfill our values, to fulfill you know, what we value most, what's most important to us. Uh-huh. And so... Um, uh, most people are, you know, seeking that which supports their values, and uh, we get um, positively, um, you know, emotionally attached. But you know, there's plenty of sales and marketing going on, and we're just we're trying to seek things, and we um, we're not trained to actually reflect on the past. Most people, right? Now, people who do get into healing practices, personal development, um, businesses that do strategic planning, they, we, then, then you start to become aware of the past and reflect on the past, and try to learn from it, mm -hmm. learn from our history. And so that, you know, um, people who have um, a more, some kind of practice there, you know, one or, you know, in at least one modality, but, you know, preferably, you know, if you can learn as many as you can, because they all have different strengths and they complement each other, then there's going to be more balance between the front and the back. Interesting. Yeah. Now, what I, what I find interesting is that that space back there at the base of your rib cage, not only does that have your kidneys and adrenals, like, oh, the stressed out life, but it also has the most lung tissue and the most diaphragm muscle, just anatomically speaking. So it's actually a very efficient place to breathe into because in front, a lot of your internal organs are here and they're kind of blocking that breath, but in back, it's nothing but lung. Mmm, interesting. So yep. just putting your hands back here. Yeah, you basically just, have lung oh. in your hands. Lung and diaphragm, that's just about it. Oh, in that, that is so of your cool. Hand. And, you know, the, the hands have the most nerve endings of any, uh, any part of our body. Is that correct? Yeah. Hands, feet, lips, genitals. Yeah, yeah. So just, just connecting with that part just raises the awareness, yeah? Yes. Well, I like this. We have a comment that says the back is also divine guidance. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. Awareness. Once you become aware of it, it's so much easier to pay attention. It's like, oh, you know, I have a C1. I can manipulate it. Dang, that's awesome. I have the base of my rib cage. I can breathe in there. I can expand. 
Yeah. I can get more oxygen in. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why, you know, when, when somebody's really tired, you'll see somebody after a run, they're kind of, you know, like uh, bending over because that takes a lot of the postural work off of that part of the body. So you can just expand as much as possible through the back of your lungs. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm glad you're, you mentioned expansion because, you know, um, yeah, that's, that's one of the, one of the challenges I'm working on this year, expanding my, um, my influence, expanding my knowledge of how to, um, how to uh, make myself uh, known online. And so like, you know, this, this right here is, uh, mm. you know, a practice that I'm, I'm well, uh, getting to know too. Yeah. And here's the cool so. thing. And here's where we can get into the like, woo, somatic somatics is Ooh, yeah. right. It's like, so like I said, you see how it's, it's really easy to start getting more control of your pain just by getting aware of the structures and how they move. But here's the thing. So once we get into, you know, once we get into the somatics, it's like, all right, so let's change how you relate to your body. And let's see if that helps your mind get set in that expansion. So again, with the breathing exercise, I use breathing exercises all the time. When I was first starting out, uh, my teaching partner and I wrote a whole series of classes called the breathing series because your breath affects every last thing in your body. Um, and I'm actually going to be teaching some parts of that online. So keep an eye out for that. That's going to be fun in my mind body online anatomy club. Um, I'm really excited about that because I've missed that stuff because breath is everything. And the cool thing is if you're alive, you can do it. It doesn't matter what the hell else is going on with your body. As long as you are alive, you are breathing. You know, unless you're on a respirator, in which case, I don't know, maybe you can program one of those to do this stuff. Let's find <laughs> out. Now I'm really curious. Okay. <laughs> I swear, don't let me around medical equipment. I'm dangerous. So, so to go back to those dimensions that we were talking about before. So find, you know, first off, organize your, organize your spine here. Find your, find your C1, stack your C1 over your rib cage, over the center of your pelvis. When we're talking about the pelvis, we got two sits bones, your tailbone and your pubic bone, those four points basically make up your pelvic floor. So you can imagine C1 balancing right between your sits bones. You know, that little rotation. That's gonna help align the whole damn thing. Get your spine aligned so you can feel fine. I love that. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what Dr. Demartini would say. I line minds and spines with the divine so that they feel fine. I love it. That's so cool. So once you've got your spine aligned, mm -hmm. then um, we're going to think about breathing. We're going to start off with that vertical dimension. So when you inhale, you're going to grow, but you're going to also sink. So as you inhale, you're going to go up and down at the same time. And as you exhale, you're going to come back to center. So it's growing and shrinking, inhaling. And exhale. Yeah, this is the phototropism and gravitropism. Both at once. Notice which one is, feels more natural and which one you have to reach for. Let's do one more. Yeah, at this at this moment. Yeah, it requires more effort to ground. Yeah. I find that with myself too. Let's do that one more time. Now you think about going side to side, kind of like your entire body is between two barn doors and they're going. Opening, and I'm just gonna bring my hands to my shoulders so that I can really feel the whole center of my body. So widening, and narrowing. You can feel this in your skull, and your ribs, and your pelvis. Inhale. 
in the whole spine. Where is it easiest? Where is it most challenging? And one more. And now, sagittal dimension forward and back. You can put one hand on your belly, one hand on your low back. And as you inhale, you're gonna go forward and back at the same time. So bulging forward, but also bulging backwards. It turns sideways here, so. Head, ribs, pelvis. And one more. So now, just pause for a minute and watch your breath, see what's different from now from when we started. Yeah, it's feeling easier. Um, it feels like it's more integrated, so forward and backward is moving as one. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, in both directions. It feels like it's just going. And there's your expansion. Now you can, now that you've done all those three, you know how it feels, you can kind of shrink that whole exercise into what I like to call egg breathing. So you imagine yourself as an egg. And as you inhale, that egg expands three-dimensionally. Mm. Up, down, front, back, side, side. And as you exhale, it comes just back to you. As you inhale, expand the egg. Really feel into that expansion. A couple more. Notice how your body feels in this expansion. So I'm going to ask you some questions about that in just a sec. Just notice. And last one. So now here is where we take both of our stuff, we put it together. Where are you feeling the most resistance in your body to that expansion? Yeah, it feels like my back. Yeah. 
for, yeah, for me, like I'm feeling it about, you know, middle trapezius, lower trapezius, mm -hmm. and a little bit of the erectors, but it's really middle and lower trapezius. Yeah, right around that area. That that feels like where there's the most uh, stiffness resistance compared to like the front, which expands. It feels like it's you know this it's going like this first. This is moving a lot. This isn't moving quite as much. There's, right. a, there's an imbalance between the limit. All right. So yeah, lower middle back. That's that that's okay because that's like three of us saying we got lower mid back things. So here's how I'm gonna handle it, and then. Jonathan, I want, to, I want to hear your take on this when we're done. Yeah, so here's, absolutely. And now here's the portion of getting out of our seats. Okay. Here's where the movement comes in for the somatic movement therapy. And you can do this seated, but you can also do it standing. What I'm going to ask you to do is just feel into this part of your body. and see how it wants to move. It's close to so just stand. Yeah, I'm just standing. And this is how my back wants to move right now. And if that movement takes itself into full body motion, I'm gonna go with it. And if it doesn't, that's cool too. I do this a lot, my body's like, wee, let's dance. So what we're doing is we're just allowing our body to move, yeah? Just letting go. It's kind of like letting go. Yep. Let your, you let your body go. Let your body move from that space. Let any movement that comes be initiated from here. So you're going to move your arm. Let it be initiated from your mid-lower back, mid-lower trapezius. You're going to take steps. It comes from here. This, we're both kind of doing a lot of sideways. I'm, I'm getting almost a figure eight shape in my movement here. Yeah, me too. I'm also getting a lot more activity on my right side. Yeah, I'm noticing tension in my shoulders, like in the traps right there, and actually a little bit more on the left side. <laughs> <laughs> upper? Those pet females, females. I tell you, <laughs> is, is it upper in the upper shoulders? Right around here. Yeah. 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 Right, right, yeah, right near the thoracic outlet. And for me, I'm noticing a lot, like, I'm, I'm noticing that there's a lot centering right around my liver on the right side. Hmm. all those Chinese medicine practitioners going right now, like, hmm, I wonder what her anger issues are. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yep. Liver is like anger. Yep. Working through that, let me tell you. Yep. Yep. Where our values have been challenged. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm noticing that as we're talking about this, I'm letting it process out into words, the movement is getting larger. And freer. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I want, like, my arm just wants to move. And that's actually, yeah. So, what I've been doing with my massage uh, clients is, as, and actually, I, I demonstrated this with you uh, when we were in uh, Los Angeles. You know, when I press on the trigger points, I have my clients move their body. Mm -hmm. So it's like we're tapping into that emotional energy, which is vibrational energy, which underlies movement and language, and we're giving it expression. Yes. 
Yeah. And actually, now with all the work I've been doing on sh on, on integrating my shame and pride, all the emotional charges, it's um, a lot of the trigger points have a component of shame energy, and in it's a the negative the, the the negative side that we remember. But what we're doing is we're when we're tapping into it. We're also identifying the positive side so that it integrates and then it neutralizes, and that's why people feel lighter. Yeah. So one of the key things from all the uh, um, working through my shame is that I actually can press a lot harder on my clients, and I can hold space for them, and actually they're borrowing my nervous system. Yeah. And I can I can help them breathe through it, move through it, work through it. And we're getting a lot deeper releases and people are going, wow, that was painful, but boy, it was so worth it. <laughs> That's cool. All right, bring it back to center. Bring it back to center. And that gesture with your arm that you're making, mm -hmm. slow it way, way, way down. Way slow. Yes. It can get bigger. Yes, there you go. Take it super, super, super slow. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. And as that arm goes up, push down with the same side foot. Yes, you feel that? Same side foot goes down as the arm goes up. Two more. Yes. And bring it to a close. however you need to. Yeah, how the neck and shoulders feeling now? Yeah, feel like, yeah, they feel lighter. And then there was a little bit of a pain here. So as I, as I was uh, moving slower and then grounding my left foot into the ground that got lighter and lighter. As I was yeah, going. yeah, so mechanically I was noticing that before you were grounding, you were like the shoulder mechanics weren't working. As soon as you grounded, suddenly the shoulder mechanics kicked in. And your arm got a reach, like a real proper reach. Mmm, interesting. Yeah, we could go into the whole like developmental sequence of yield, push, reach, grasp, you know, <sighs> reach, grasp, pull. But that's that might be for another day because we have we've been here for almost an hour right now. I know, I know. Interesting, yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> this is super cool, right? Yeah. So yeah, wow, so, we covered a lot of ground, didn't we? Yeah. So just to kind of circle back, if you do that egg breathing now, You notice how different your back feels. Yeah, it feels <clears throat> there's more movement, feels yeah. more even. Yeah. And for me, I'm noticing the muscles are still sore, but they're less sore. And they can expand a lot better. Very cool. So yeah, the movement component, this is huge. 
And then you've got the mind body component. Does that particular part of the, of the back have a specific link or is it just in general, the back? <clears throat> well, um, <clears throat> since it's, it's about expansion, um, uh, there would be, uh, if there's any um, restriction, it would be the perceptions of restriction. Where, where we, where we, you know, who, who, or what was an obstacle in our past hmm. that we perceive we couldn't overcome, and we're still feeling ungrateful. Uh, we're feeling ashamed about it. Uh, we're feeling not worthy, not enough. Blah blah blah. Yeah, you know. So, yeah. So that's that's actually where it will store the emotions and the inform unconscious information will store, and we will feel it as stiffness and or pain and or restriction. Mm hmm. Yeah. So yeah, moving the movement, you know, becoming aware, doing the movement and breathing into it helps uh, bring awareness to it. And then you can start to become conscious of the information there. And then you, right. know, you know, can take your modality to go uh, integrate that. Absolutely. Whether it's through body work or movement or, you know, Demartini method or whatever, you know, energy work, you know, take your pick. Yeah. Uh, There's just two great ways to get information that work really well together. Go on. Yeah, yeah. This is this is fun. I'd love to love to do more. This I is, know, right? This is yeah. So let's let's we'll, we'll talk more about this. So we should definitely do this more. What do you think? If you guys want to see us do more, put it in the comments. Vote. Yes. Because that way, yes, we'll know there's interest, um, and we'll yeah, do and we would we would love to just share and demonstrate because as you can tell, we're two uh, we're two nerds, two geeks that just uh, we love this stuff. So um, let us know, please. We are some big nerds. There's a great question here. Is this how people who do yoga feel? I don't do yoga, so I don't know. Like, I don't really do that much yoga. I'd say people with, who do yoga in good classes might, but, you know. I yeah, it would, it, would de it would depend on um, the instructor and then um, how, you know, the, the, the skill and the experience of the instructor and then uh, the, the, the modality, whether, you know, how, you know, how complete the, the yoga modality, because there's plenty and a lot have been, you know, kind of distorted. But there's going to be, you know, in any field, you're going to have the, the, you know, the few percent that really know what they're doing. And then you're going to have a bunch that, you know, it's going to be kind of hit or miss. It, it broke but, um, when I realized it is, it is a great therapist. modality to build awareness and physical. movement. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, if, if 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 you're working with someone who who knows what they're doing, they got the experience and they get results. Yeah, mm -hmm. that most definitely. And so. and if you can go into your body and be as aware as possible, so you need student awareness and you need the instructor knowledge mm -hmm. and awareness also. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then yeah, and if you can combine other 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 perspectives, then you get a more complete picture. So mind body connection is another perspective. Body works another perspective. Chiropractic, acupuncture, energy chakras. Uh, there's a whole bunch out there, and that's what's so cool about life. There's so many different perspectives, and you get uh, everybody has a piece of the puzzle. So you know, go go get as many pieces as you can. Learn just, it's just more empowering. Yeah, and the more you can integrate them, then. Uh, the more you uh, get to empower your life, so that's what that's what I love doing, and that's what I love about Lissa. She's, you know, you've uh, you've done your studies over the years. How many how many different things have you studied over the years? Oh my god, uh, <laughs> lots, lots, yeah, loads. I've had, says I've the... had like three different Pilates certifications, um, personal training, um, you know, American kayak Associ American canoe association kayak instructors. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Somatic movement therapy, obviously. I'm a registered somatic movement therapist and educator. Um, and a ton of things that have expired that I don't even remember what they are anymore. <laughs> so many things. Yeah. Well, it's, it's been an honor and a privilege to be able to do this live stream with you, Lisa. Um, it's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's um, rare, rare that I get to run into someone who loves the body and anatomy as much as you do. So it's really uh, inspiring to be been able to share this. Likewise. And I, I really love your perspective on this because it's interesting. Like I said, I do mind body work. But I tend to work from the body end of the spectrum and you work almost more from the mind end of the spectrum, but not in a psychological way, you know, not in a, yeah. the way, a, a, not in the way that a psychologist would. 
Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. it's a really interesting combination. And yeah, it's certainly a pleasure in talking with you. And thank you for your vulnerability and sharing all of your, you know, all of your shame triggers, because that's hard. It's hard to do yeah. in public. And here you are doing it anyway. So high five. Boom. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So uh, for those of, uh, those of you who have uh, joined us live or watching the replay, please uh, follow uh, Alyssa Mahalik. Uh, she'd love to be your friend. She is putting out some great content. Uh, what are you What are you going to be creating, uh, bringing out in the next couple of weeks? Oh yeah, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to do the the Mind Body Club. It's anatomy, physiology, injury re um, injury rehab, and of course, mind body connection. Everywhere, it's going to be super fun. You can find me at somaticanatomy.com, um, somatic anatomy on Instagram, Lisa Mahalik M I C H A L A K on Facebook. It's I'm tagged in here. Just find me. It'll be awesome. Um, and yep. cool things will happen. Yeah. Right on. And then um, I'm, uh, I put out my mind body map recently. So if you check out my time lap timeline, um, I'll also post this in the comments. Uh, it's a free map on some of the common issues for every uh, part of the body, mm. uh, so the top seven parts of the body. So it's a good way to start the awareness from a mind perspective. Um, it's a free download. You can download it at uh, sugai.solutions uh dot slash uh mind body factor map i'll put the link in the comments below definitely okay so thank you lissa um and uh yeah we'll uh we'll have a conversation soon about uh doing some future broadcasts because this was a lot of fun this was a lot of fun yeah okay i hope uh those of you tuned in had fun with us and uh we'll look forward to more exactly everybody enjoy your anatomy out there and enjoy your mind body connection as well Yes. All right. Aloha from Hawaii. And see you later from NYC. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.